guys are ridiculous. These guys are ridiculous. Now, how about them damn Celtics? And we are back with another episode of How About Them Celtics. Sam and I are here recording on Saturday, October 28th at 7.54 in the fucking morning. <laughs> am... You can't say we don't love you guys because uh, I... I'm, I'm talking so to Jack far too early. This is terrible. I So I got back from the garden. I left the garden like seven, like five, five of midnight, right? Got on the tee, got home at like two. 130 maybe and then i wrote and Takes edited you an hour and a half to get home roughly maybe and you won't drive i hate driving i won't do it no i hate it i don't like it it's also cheaper just to not drive the money i understand but i it's would like, not i wouldn't want to be bound to that train it's like 50 bucks a park plus gas versus just yeah 20 at a park at the other place yeah it's just i, I don't mind and i, I kind of like as for all all the shit, I don't mind taking the public transport. It's fine. It's it's easy. Uh, it's longer, but I I can't, part is, of me just likes to. It is three chill. in the morning for you. You are just yeah. A, I'm not a about a it. Corpse. I'm so not about this. The reason I'm recording now is because I've got I'm golfing at eleven, and then I'm going to an event, a boxing event with my uncle and my brother, and I think my cousin later tonight. And so I wouldn't be home till like ten eleven. And so it's either we record this now or at ten or eleven, and this this was the decision. Be home. Yeah, yeah. This this was the choice we made. Uh, so I'm. You go from library prairie Jack to a uh, corpse Jack to a uh, dead Jack, Jack it, tranquilized Jack, <laughs> uh, horse tranquilizer Jack. <laughs> Nova, not Novocaine anesthesia Jack. Yeah, dude, I'm not about it. This is whack. I don't um, know if you're going to be as easy of a laugh as you would be on anesthesia, though. Uh, probably not. Probably not. The last time I was on anesthesia was when I got my wisdom teeth out, and apparently I was just swearing at the doctors, and they got mad at me. <laughs> that was the only time I've ever been on anesthesia. When I got my uh, wisdom but... teeth out, uh, my mom came with me because I was like, I swear. Yeah, I was it was high school. Yeah, yeah. And... Uh, she was like, yeah, it was really weird. You were telling me uh, you love me. And I was like, oh. <laughs> I love how that's the weird for you. Yeah. <laughs> that's so fucked up. Uh, anyways, My I first, got home. like, serious laugh, like, the, and then I'm done. My first, like, really, really hard laugh as a baby is my mom was choking on a grape. <laughs> You're so I've been told. You're I came the out the womb a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. It's too early for years this. years ago today, I came out the womb. Oh, yeah. Happy yeah. birthday, Sam. Actually, <laughs> it's, too, it's too early for me to be happy, paying happy attention. Happy birthday from HBTC to me. <laughs> it is my actual birthday, so I can party too. Hey. All right. Happy birthday, Sam. Say happy birthday to Sam in the comments. But mm. as I mentioned, I got home from the garden last night. Got home from Celtics Heat. Uh, Celtics won their hope home opener against the Heat. What was the final score? They won by eight. Wow, I was thinking the spread was eight and a half. They they called it. Jalen hit a three too. Like he did not yeah. have to. Well, Devin got it at eight, so he pushed. Okay, but I I won my. Yes, fate. if you took the it was one nineteen to one eleven. If you took the pick on the stream, you would have lost. Mm-hmm. But I faded it, so I I I hit the one and one on the fade. <laughs> mm-hmm. We'll take it though. But Derek White was the star of the show in that game. Twenty eight points, six. Uh, excuse me, sorry. Twenty eight points, six rebounds, three assists, one steal, three blocks. Uh, we're not gonna go too in depth on it. We did a whole video on it. It's on podcast feeds. It's on uh YouTube as well. So if you want to listen to our post game thoughts, go check it out there. Library Jack was in full effect. Sean Corrales mm-hmm. gave me shit because I. I was recording in the common space and he doesn't care, but I, I asked him anyways. And so he, he gave me crap after <clears throat> shout out, John. He's the man. He's, he makes a trip back dude. to Rhode Island every game. Yeah. He's a beast. Respect. He's a beast. Yep. Um, Drew holiday also had a great game. 17, 10 and seven for him. Jalen Brown had a nice bounce back with 27 himself, 50% shooting 43 from three. Uh, Tatum had 22, eight and five, although he was relatively inefficient. And Porzingis had a pretty rough game overall, but he still shot 50% from the field, 17 points, nine rebounds, yeah. three steals. Best, That's a pretty good rough, rough game. game. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so bench was pretty meh. Hauser, Brissett, 
or excuse me, Hauser and Pitt Pritchard didn't do much. Horford grabbed 10 rebounds. Brissett was really good. Uh, came in impact player in that first quarter, crashed the glass real hard, won them a bunch of possessions, kind of changed the, the pace of the whole game, really. Uh, Celtics were getting beaten transition a lot early, getting out rebounded on the glass, and, and Brissett came in, mucked up the game, and, and kind of changed the momentum a little bit, which was uh, – Cool to see because that he didn't get minutes in the first game and then he came in this one and uh he did something. He, he changed. He changed the game. <laughs> it was good. Yeah. They looked horrible in that first half up until Brissett's debut. <laughs> Comes in the game, yeah. right off rip, gets an offensive rebound off a free throw, gets blocked, but he still gets in the extra possession. He ends up finishing the game with three offensive rebounds. Pretty solid debut when you only have have two points and five rebounds and Jason Tatum is telling mm-hmm. you that you're the sole reason that the team got back into the game. He truly turned the tide. He went in the first half. Celtics were down 13 comes out. They're down three. The plus 10 was for real. That was the truest plus minus you'll ever see. Uh, along with him, Jalen Brown deserves a shout because he played really well, especially after being very meh in that opening game. He turned the, but he had stretches yesterday where he turned the ball over, but he was efficient. He made some big shots. He was a big part of that first half charge back into the game. And it was really just good to see him be able to still step into that. And it didn't feel super forced at times. There were times when it was like, calm down, buddy. We're, it's all calm down a minute. You're doing a little bit too much. But even with all that, the efficiency was there. The numbers look good. Fine. Um, and yeah, your guy, Derek White. Massive, massive. One more thing Very I good. Say, I to say it. Want to see him shoot a three or or have mm. the opportunity to shoot because it when he was out there in the second half, the Heat were just leaving him wide open. He mm. was the help off guy. They could not care less that he was open in the corner. Nobody was afraid of him shooting. And he didn't even touch the ball. So the Celtics were facing double teams and not getting any sort of benefit from it. That's my last point. Yeah. Yeah, you'd like to see him shoot. He's not the best shooter, but just being – capable or willing to shoot is more than other players can say i.e ben simmons and that's what you want to see uh from those players but yeah good game from the celtics this is two clutch wins in the first two games in the season that's not something you saw a lot last year um so that's a good thing let's jump into we're gonna do some takeaways some of our uh, our observations from the first two games and my first one is gonna be if you play the celtics you're gonna have their best shooting night of the year that's Mm. That that's the takeaway I have. Uh, Miami shot forty eight point five percent from from three. Uh, the Knicks shot I think around forty four percent because I know combined the two teams shot forty five point nine percent. I did the math last night, and I I think it, a mix of that is the Celtics scrambling so much on defense they give up a couple more open threes than they would want. But it's also just the Heat making a bunch of contested shots, which they do, and the Knicks did the same, and it's frustrating. Um, I will say. If there was ever a time for it to happen, it's probably good to get some of those games out during the start of the season uh, because it's a good way to test your defense and adjust from there. And the Celtics won both games, right? Like, so there's only so much you can ask. So as much as it sucks that these teams shot so well and you could, you know, potentially look at <clears throat> did the Celtics play good enough defense? Like they won both of the, <coughs> excuse me, the game. So they found a way around it. And I know there was a stat after the first game that, after the first night of basketball, only two teams won their game when their opponent shot better from three and they did. And the Celtics were one of them. And so I wonder what the stat is now because the Celtics did not. The, the Heat also shot better than the Celtics from three. So they're finding ways to win outside of, you know, beating the other team from three. And that didn't happen a lot last year. So to happen back to back, it's a good sign, I would say. I'll tell you what, Miami shot 61.5% from three in the second half. Eight of 13. Mm-hmm. Just every big three that has been thrown up against the Celtics this year has found the bottom of the net, and I'm sick and tired of it. Your point is great. I'm not really sure that it's the Celtics' fault that these shots are going down. There are times where guys are getting open looks, but at the same time, Kevin Love made a few tough ones. Hero made some tough ones off screens. Like They really did a pretty decent job at running them off the three-point line, and in the second half, it didn't matter. The same thing was true against the Knicks. The Knicks were lights out in that second half. It was one of the reasons they stormed back and took a lead in the fourth quarter was because they could not miss from long range. So I'm interested to see how it goes for the Celtics when they don't have to face 
a team that is just not missing shots, especially from deep. Um, your other point on the sheet is that the defense is nasty. Mm-hmm. So I'd imagine that doesn't have anything to do with the threes. It's just they're getting unlucky. Partially, yeah. Uh, Better I'm now looking... than the conference finals. <clears throat> I'm looking to see. Yeah, okay, this makes sense. So the Heat took five, six tightly contested threes with a defender within two to four feet, uh, and they made five of them. <laughs> so, <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, there's a stat for you. All right. Um, that's pretty fun. Uh yeah, the, the, the Celtics are, are doing their best. How many wide open threes did they get? That's that's the thing that I look for. They got they got a decent amount actually. They got six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen of their thirty something were wide open. So maybe that's something you want to cut down on. I, I don't know what the league average is. <clears throat> a lot of that is just good ball movement and finding an open corner guy and driving kick. So it is what it is. But five of six on contested threes is. Cool. Very cool, Miami. I wonder what the Knicks... Uh, it's ass. Knicks did. Is what it is. <laughs> ass. It should be illegal. Miami shouldn't be allowed to make contested threes after the conference finals. They they mm-hmm. should have burned every single three-pointer that they had in the bank. Maybe it does, it resets at the end of the season and they're just getting after it early. But yeah. they, I should not have to watch another game where Jimmy off the street for the Heat. I guess Jimmy's... Mm-hmm. Joey off the street for Miami is just Jim knocking Smith. down yeah, three or four threes. And it's just like, who is this guy? Like Kyle yeah. Lowry had 13 points yesterday. What? Yeah, Kyle Lowry amazing. was a corpse all of last season. Now all of a sudden he can play. <laughs> He's three or four from deep. Like, what are we watching? Yeah. He was a real pain in the ass. He looked like prime Lowry where he was just annoying the hell out of me. That's for damn sure. No. Yeah, I agree. I agree. It's it's not fun to watch. It's very frustrating. Um, but I, I still do think the defense has shown that it's can be the best in the league. Like this defense has been great so far. The the paint defense in particular, they're not giving up points in the paint. This is it's very reminiscent of the Bucks defense with Brooke Lopez. It is maybe we'll give up some threes, but you're not scoring on us in the paint. I don't know how much of that is Charles Lee, probably a lot, or how much of it is just them having the guy who can play that style of defense now and Christoph Porzingis. But teams are not scoring in the paint against the Celtics. The the, the <clears throat> excuse me, the um Knicks shot poorly from two. The Heat also shot worse from two than they did from three in the game they played the Celtics. That's turning into a trend very quickly. Um <laughs> the Celtics have only averaged 113, 113.5 points through two games, and they're two and zero. Oh. If it like that, this just isn't something that happened last year. The Celtics were very dependent on their offense. And I I still do think they need to find a better offensive consistency with how poor the ball movement has been at times, but to see them win these two games with defense and with clutch time performances and and big time plays towards the end of the game, like that's huge. That's really, really huge. Yeah. Um, This is just me. Like I'm not talking now I am, but it's just me nodding. And if yeah. you're watching, you know it's not true. But in my head, I'm just sitting there like vigorously nodding like Jack Nicholson in the GIF. It is just everything I could have asked for. The Celtics are playing defense. They're closing games. This is two clutch wins we talked about a little bit yesterday. And they have not mm-hmm. only been good at the end of games in the actual clutch time minutes. Yo, sorry, I just looked up a stat. What are the Celtics opponents through two games shooting less than five feet from the hoop? 30 something percent 30 42 42.9 okay the the next best is 46.5 okay sorry this is numbers even better through the first two games Celtics opponents are shooting 38.8 percent in the restricted area Ooh. you know how fucking crazy that is yeah. <laughs> the next best number is 46.5 and only three teams have it under 50 percent that's that's insane 38.8 percent. they've made less than 10 shots a game in the restricted area through two games i'm that's curious crazy. to see what it's gonna look like if they continue to be able to block shots at such a high clip like Derek white three blocks yesterday porzingis had four in the opener and against miami they made them struggle inside and bam was a four still like he was 40 like, percent mm-hmm. from the field but he was there he was driving good. fours you know Celtics have 17 blocks on the season only one team has more do you want to guess who it is uh Ooh, this is, a test. is it okc 
It's not. It's the Pistons. Pistons. Jalen Duran my, leading my the charge boys. there. Mm-hmm. They won yesterday. Your fellas. No, yeah. <clears throat> Celtics defense has been insane. Their defensive rating isn't as good, but I think a part of that is the Heat and the, <laughs> the Knicks shooting like 50% from three <laughs> through two games. But the Wizards on um, Monday, dude, just <clears throat> thinking about all those balls bouncing off the rim. Get ready for the NFL season with incredible offers from FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers can bet $5 and get 200 in bonus bets. Guaranteed. That's guaranteed. Plus, all customers who bet $5 will get $100 off NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Now is the best time to join FanDuel. It absolutely is. The app is easy to use, and you can be on everything from spreads to player props and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash Boston. Kick off the NFL season with an offer you won't want to miss. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Yeah, that should be a a fun one. The, They're going to the Wizards. <laughs> yeah, right. The Wizards have the worst defensive rating in the NBA by a mile. At yeah, they're, they're so bad. They are yeah, the so bad. <laughs> They gave up 143 points on opening night to the Pacers. They're terrible. Yeah, that's their only game uh, so far, so it's not really fair. Chris Dobbs' return terrible. game? Yeah, I think they boo him. Uh, maybe. I don't think they have a reason to, but... Yeah, he was there for like a season. Like, is Brogdon going to get booed here? I don't think so. Maybe. <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be funny. As hell. We have some idiot people in our <clears throat> fan base, so I don't know. Uh, I agree. All right, let's see. We've done teams can't miss. Defense is nasty. We'll go from the bottom up. The offense has been kind of stagnant. The ball yeah. hasn't popped around quite as much as I would like. They've only averaged 19 assists per game. It's been two games. But that's on the <laughs> lower side, especially because they're <clears throat> scoring over 100 points. I mean, every team is over 110 points, I should say, per game. Would like to see that. It's a chemistry thing, sure. Like a lot of these guys at the top, they're still getting used to playing with each other. Yesterday, I thought it was better. But there's a lot of just ISO, dribble, 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 step to the side, shots. Uh, it's me time, shots. And I'm not loving it. Not loving it. Even the Derek White stretch. I love Derek White cooking, but like that wasn't a product of good ball movement. It was a product no. of absolute baller play from Derek nasty. White. Maybe yeah, it feels you can like... get away with that because your team is mm-hmm. so good at the top. But yeah. I don't know. Move it around. Yeah, it feels like the Celtics have rested too much on the fact that they're just really good. <clears throat> as weird as that sounds, like they're just playing one on one. They're playing a lot of you know attacking mismatches, like it was Drew Holiday and Tatum attacking Jaime Jaquez, or them going at Tyler Hero and, and hunting those matchups. <clears throat> and that's fine, but it has to come with drive and kick. It can't just be let me attack this and take a silly turn around fadeaway because that's that's where we get hauser island from like that's the reverse effect of, of the celtics just not passing the ball enough and then just settling for these pull-up shots um without any ball movement or off ball movement the off ball movement's another big thing uh jalen brown had a nice cut at one point drew holiday did too a shaber set was doing it all game but other than that there's really no like there's no off ball screens. There's no cutting off the ball. There's there's no running around to grab the ball. It's a lot of, okay, the guy with the ball is going to initiate the offense and everyone else is going to stand around while he does it. Like, <clears throat> that's not exactly what you want to see from a team, uh, regardless of the talent that has championship expectations. Uh, you you want to see them do a bit more um, on the offensive end. Uh, as far as your uh, other thing on here, early threes uh, is something you've been looking at, right? I don't love the early threes. It feels like there's a lot of them, so I went and looked it up. It's mm-hmm. not as glaring, but yeah. let's see. 12%-ish of their possessions overall, this is not just their three-point shots, are early chucks. They have, of their 39 average three-point attempts, again, through two games, 10 of them are coming with more than 15 seconds on the shot clock. That really shouldn't happen. I'm okay you have to account with a few for the fast break. I'm okay with it on the fast break. If one guy is driving, instead of filling the lanes, going to the block, it's okay to go to the corners of the wing. Fine. Cause you're going to be so open and it's in rhythm, but I've seen a lot. And I'm sure you have too, of a lot of guys just calling their own number at the top of the key. Tatum taking some early ones. Brown, even Derek mm. white took a couple yesterday. Pritchard. Everyone Pritchard, does. Yeah. Pritchard made it. 
was fire. He did. It, it was cool. But but I, I don't – even Drew Holiday likes an early in the shot clock three too. I mm-hmm. just don't think that's the best practice with this team. They have too much talent for that to be a staple of their offense. Like that should be closer to 6 to 8% instead of 12%. You can work to get better shots. And, there again, there's nothing wrong with threes. This is not me being like Celtics never take threes. Don't take threes. Sam no. hate threes. <laughs> I don't love the threes, but if you're going to take them – there is a way to do it. You can move the ball around, create, make those shots even easier and more in rhythm rather than just, okay, look at this, watch this Mm -hmm. right here, right here, three, and then throw it right off the backboard. So Michael. Yeah. (laughs) It is weird because it does feel to some degree that the Celtics haven't been taking a lot of threes, but I think the reason for that is they haven't been taking a lot of the threes they worked for last year because a lot of them have been those dribble dribble pull ups. Like there haven't been enough catch and shoot opportunities, in my opinion, for the Celtics. You see Derek White get them. <clears throat> you see Kristaps Porzingis Chris get them. That's kind of it, right? Like no one else is really getting those catch and shoot threes. Sam Hauser obviously gets them when he gets in the game because that's just the only way he scores. But um, it just feels like they're not fighting to look for those. Uh, those looks as much this year. We, uh, so far, again, it's two games. These are all early, uh, early, you know, reactions. But it's just, yeah, they're averaging twenty five of their how many threes have taken thirty nine ca- are catch and shoot. So that means fourteen of their threes a game are not catch and shoot threes. Don't love it, right? Don't don't love that number. I wonder how many catch and shoot threes they averaged last year. I'm going to check now, but yeah, twenty five catch and shoot threes a game 38 percent are going in it's actually not an amazing number i mean you'd like to see it a little higher but um it they're just not working to get those same looks as much because it feels like they're relying on their talent which is fine to some degree yeah they averaged 30 catch and shoot threes last year so they're getting five less catch and shoot threes a game this year than they did averaged across all last season so hopefully that numbers goes up as the the uh the offense works out the kinks but it, it feels like they've taken the we have so much talent we can work to get our own looks to a too large of a degree like it's rather than we're all so good that we can improve the offense the Celtics played last year because we're so talented it is we can just make our own offense and figure it out which again the positive is they've won the games regardless of that so it shows that they are that talented that they can win some of these games and that should I mean these are the games that this is what I expected the playoffs to look like this, this mismatch hunting, this, this very ISO work talent heavy style, but it's not sustainable throughout the regular season. Uh, you got to get into the offense that was so successful at the start of last year. You got to fight for those, those better catch and shoe looks. Um, and they haven't done that through two games. The ball movement just needs to be a bit better, more free flowing. Yeah. I, I don't love it. I think, uh, They've got some work to do here. And I guess that's good because they've won their first two games against teams that exactly many consider to be good teams. Um, Great. Cool. Good start. But you have to keep getting better. I want to see mm-hmm. these guys really play together. This team can really be an absolute hoss if they are yeah. moving the ball and keeping the defenses moving and rotating and guessing. When it becomes Tatum, 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 oh, Tatum's covered. Okay, pass the ball. It's not it's not good basketball. I don't want them to go towards that Luka ball. I don't. It sucks. Yes, Dallas is 2-0, and oh, but it is painful to yeah. watch. And it's just not the right way to play. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, all right, next thing. Let's check in with some former Celtics, uh, i.e. the Celtics who, weren't on, who were on the team last year but are no longer with the team. Starting with Marcus Smart. Uh, through two games with the Grizzlies, he's averaging 18 and a half points for assists. You didn't put yes. the A or the B. Four assists and three and a half steals on 54, uh, 4.2, 38.5 splits. Second leading score in Memphis. Shocker, Marcus Smart is awesome. <clears throat> it's like that's the takeaway. Marcus Smart is great. perfect. Uh, also, three and a half turnovers per game. But that's not ideal, but he's Memphis 0 awesome. 2. They miss Ja and they miss <laughs> the other big guys. Steven Adams, Brandon Clark. Yeah. Uh, it's tough when, when the injuries are, are piling up like that. But Marcus Smart is doing his best to uh, <clears throat> help keep them on pace where they want to be. He's averaging the third, fourth most minutes on the team. <clears throat> Leading second leader in scoring, 
taking the third most shots a game. Um, shooting very efficiently, though, and that's what they want to see from him. So I'm people sure are uh, pretty happy with him from what I'm yeah. seeing on Twitter. They like that's good. They like his defense. He had a couple. He had five steals yesterday. It's kind of nuts, but a lot of people <laughs> praising him. A lot of Grizzlies counts all about Marcus. So I'm happy they're treating him good. Nice. Yeah. Need that. Love to see it. Uh, Grant Williams <laughs> averaging uh, 11 points for the Mavericks. 11 points, six rebounds, <clears throat> one, uh, two and a half turnovers a game, though. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sorry. He's leading the Mavericks in turnovers, which is kind of funny. I got something in my throat. <clears> throat> I'm not leading laughing the, at you. Leading the Mavs in turnovers, but he is shooting 47% from the field, 42% from deep. That's why they signed him. Uh, okay. That in the defense, he's averaging the third most minutes on the team between behind Luca and Kyrie. He's been good for them. He's played the role they wanted him to play, and that's all that really matters for them. So, uh, yeah, Grant, good. So I went on Twitter, like I did, and I'll keep doing this for all these guys. And uh, the first notable tweet that is not from Grant Williams that came up says. Grant Williams runs like he's got big titties. So Dallas Mavericks fans <laughs> are learning what it is like to see Grant Williams hustle up and down the court. Yeah, uh, I'm not seeing a whole lot of disrespect for Grant though, so that's good. good. It looks like they're not they're not over his antics just yet. Well, they don't play much defense in Dallas, so he's probably a welcome sight. <laughs> he's probably a welcome sight, and uh, the Blazers, fellas. Uh, looking at Malcolm Brogdon, 19 points, four and a half rebounds, three assists, uh, only one and a half turnover, shooting 45.2% from the field and 45.5% from deep, tied with Shaden Sharp for leading the Blazers in scoring uh, in only 26.6 minutes a game, which is like six on the team. So he's playing real well for them. Uh, he was in, in the closing minutes last night when I was watching the game. He's been very, uh, very good so far, so they're probably pretty happy. Yeah, Brogdon came out and said over the summer that he prepared to be traded to the Clippers twice. So he definitely <laughs> thought he was gone that first time. And then there was another time that he thought he was going there, maybe after he joined the Blazers. I don't know. But mm. I'm not seeing a whole lot of Brogdon hate on Twitter or anything at all about Malcolm Brogdon, other than he kind of looks like Andre Miller in a Blazers uniform. But yeah, I don't I don't see too much of uh, hot takes on Malcolm, but He's gotten off to a good start, and it shouldn't be the most shocking thing in the world when he was a prominent piece of uh, what the Pacers were doing. He was averaging just about the same scoring-wise. His assists were up a bit higher, though. Also, Brogdon on Twitter, by the way, still has uh, him with the banners as his picture. Yeah, Brogdon doesn't strike me as a social media guy. Definitely is not. <laughs> Definitely is not. Um, Last guy, Robert Williams. Uh, is averaging eight points, five rebounds, one assist, uh, one and a half steals, and half a block a game on 66.7% shooting, getting 21.6 minutes a game. Him and Aiden are basically splitting those center minutes. Aiden getting 27, Rob getting just under 22 now. Um, Aiden also not been very great. He's averaging a ton of rebounds, so give him credit for the defense and the, the you know, that, but he's only averaging nine points. But Rob's been fine. Any any Rob slander? Is it all fine for Rob on Twitter? Is there not much? A lot of excitement about Rob. They like his super Good. cold dunks. He made a jump shot on the opening opening game against the Clippers. Yes, I saw that. People were calling him Garnett. Yeah. I saw people saying you wish. They're like, oh my yeah. God. Somebody put uh, the Vince McMahon video and says, Dad, what was it like watching Marcus throw lobs to Robert Williams? <laughs> Special. Special. Uh, something I've seen a lot on Twitter is the Grizzlies looking for trade targets for like center trade targets. And Rob has been like a name that people have thrown around. So that would be fun. So we if they went and got Rob special Celtics, East, Celtics West. Yeah. Nice. Then I can shout out to RJ Celtics West. Yeah. I All literally right. thought I froze. That's how. <laughs> no, sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm, out I'm out of it. I'm not even I'm a joke. Just yet. illusion. Dude, I was watching. Blog uh, name. I was watching a uh, – there's something that came up on Twitter. I saw the um, – there's a video of Chris Forsberg heartbroken after the yeah. rock raid, and then, and then it's – That's uh, the first may, thing that comes up. Yeah, but then he may have found his rebound, and it's just him, like, falling in love with poor Uh Anyways, let's check in with our emails. Um, 
I know we have a bunch today, so we'll get through them pretty quick. Uh, <clears throat> but yeah, let's let's take a look kid, and see what we got. First one from Philip Hart um, <clears throat> from a couple days ago. Psychology of reactions. Hi, fellas. Thanks for humoring, humoring me to talk about fan and player psychology. Sam asked why fans media are so quick to flip flop based on recent wins and losses. Luckily, this is a fairly easy one to explain. Though there are multiple, excuse me, though there are a number of factors that go into flip flopping. The big one is recency bias. Uh, it is a memory bias where we overestimate the value of recent events and predicting the future. Perhaps that helps explain the psychology of a slumping shooter or a hot hand. We don't make this mistake when we are a weathered veteran, but newbies can't help but react to strong events or react strongly to recent events. Seeing them as more valid predictors than events further in the past. We won last night. This team's going all the way away. We lost fire Joe. This is the we're so back and it's Jover. Uh, I yeah. think this seems worse. Um, when a team takes on a lot of bandwagon fans or unusual media coverage, Patriots fans, Patriots. all the new eyes lack the experience to not fall into recency bias. That said, KP for MVP, obviously yeah. all the best, Phil. Respect, yeah. Phil. <laughs> See, here's the problem with this, though. Like, I overreact. Me too. Yeah, it's just, it's I'm just like 2-0. and oh. Even though we just like spent a bulk of the show being like, these guys still kind of suck and they need to get their heads yeah. out of their ass. But also, title. 2 and 0, 83 and 0 on the way. Yeah. Eyes. Got to include that playing game <clears throat> or the uh, in season tournament. Uh, Philip Hero Ball, Jack and Sam, do you gentlemen watch Hero Ball and Bleacher Reports? Just as good this. of Game of Zones. Uh, was in the latest episode drop with the Dream. Dame Trade was no exception. I would love to hear reactions to episodes if you watch the show. Uh, this is our homework. We'll watch Hero Ball and next pod or in a future pod, we'll talk about it. I have not seen it. I've heard it's good though. I've seen like. Clips. I saw this email yesterday. I meant to watch it. I'm sorry, Philip. Sorry, Sam's a loser. Uh, I'll check in. Uh, I'll, I'll make sure to check it out. <clears throat> all righty. Oh, gosh. Uh, all right. Let's see. Where did we go right? Hey, guys. Time for another first quarter deep dive on the Celtics offense. The men in green had a great pacing in the opening period. The key elements per possession. Um, <clears throat> this is from the Knicks game. This is Knicks game. The key elements per possession, which I've marked in the bold type in my mind, are how quickly did the Celtics get into the front court and how quickly did they get a shot off? So we can look at some of your early threes here, Sam. Getting into the front court before 19 seconds is my definition of good. Getting a shot off uh, in the top half of the clock 12 seconds or earlier is good. If you're shooting after a reset, make that seven seconds. You can browse the summaries, but look for how often you see bold face items. Remember, bold type equals good. So sure. bold is 12 seconds or earlier, seven seconds. Okay, so shot with 14 seconds. Uh, this was shot with 19 seconds, so that's not a good one for Sam. <clears throat> Uh, no, it was just the ball got into the front court. Ball went out, out of bounds. So it, mm, was, it was tough position. Another three or five seconds. 21 seconds after a rebound. Tatum made a five further at 17 second That's mark. Fine. 15 seconds, 21, 16, 20, 22. This is another transition, though, fast pace. Um, cruises and then 11 seconds in a shot. So so I think RJ is prioritizing fast pace offense here for his bold. Uh, fast 20 pace seconds is okay. It's just. 15. There's a difference between fast pace and settling. Yeah. 21 dribbles at 21 contested three at 17. This is the stuff you probably don't like. Yeah. Um, but he made it. So, <laughs> uh, elbow jumper with five seconds. Holiday dribbles, uh, three pointer with seven seconds, uh, 21 seconds. Yeah. So a lot of early shot clock shots, but also a lot of them were fast pace getting to the front court after a rebound. So Love like I, I do think, yeah, I do think there's a balance. Our rebounds so that, and dribbles in twenty one at twenty one seconds passes to Pritchard, who launches a contested three <laughs> at nineteen seconds. This is Sam's nightmare. <laughs> That's the nightmare. I, I remember that possession too, and he should have hit Porzingis because that was right after Porzingis hit the bank three. Mm. Okay, yeah. And I was gotcha. like, heat check, heat check, heat check, and Porzingis was trailing, like ready to step into a three right at the top of the key, his money spot, and it was like it's Pritchard time. <laughs> did he make it no <laughs> see all that lovely bold font lots of zippy basketball and way 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 less of what we saw last year slow advancement followed by hammering the nail followed by an iso shot to avoid a 24 second violation these celtics weren't always sprinting but they were playing with purpose and execution which res resulted in a 30 point quarter they keep this up for more of the game and it'll be a fun season indeed be well rj i do agree in the sense that they are playing faster this year 
Now, what we said earlier, I think still rings true that they need to move the ball more, but they are definitely making a concerted effort to not drag the ball up the court as much as they did. Um, and in crunch time, there is a lot less of let's bleed the clock with four minutes left and, and more yeah. of let's focus, which is very fun to see. <clears throat> That's how you should be playing. Bleed the clock, baby. No. Uh, yeah. All right. Pass it around. Christian Calderon. Welcome, Christian. Thank you for the email. Uh, behind the scenes media member. Hey, fellas, I'm sure you've seen O'Shea Brissett's YouTube channel where he gives us some cool behind-the-scenes look at, of what goes on as a player by, um, on the Celtics. My question is, can you give us a behind-the-scenes look at what goes in or what goes on as a media member for the Celtics? You don't have to carry on a camera, but maybe walk us through how you prepare for games you're going to cover. How early do you get there? How long after a game do you stay? Do you have predetermined questions or let the game decide? Do you know which players are going to be available for posting in comments? Any other cool tidbits? Big fan of the pod. Keep up the great work. Thank you, Christian. Um, Thank you. you yeah, we that? can. Yeah, let's rock. Uh, how early do you get there? So I usually get there. I leave my it's house. It's good at for like, me. Yeah. So I leave my house. I get drive to the T station, get on the T, and I'm usually at the t- place uh, garden by like 4, 45. Um, I think I was there a little early yesterday. I think I was there at like 430. But that's because I, I like to leave my house super early in case there's traffic and stuff. So I'll leave my house mm-hmm. at like 3, get to the T, park, get in, and then I'm there. By like, like I, yesterday was four thirty. But if there's traffic or the T is slow, then I get there latest at five, um, because Joe's pregame press conference is an hour and forty five before tip every time. So for a seven thirty game, his press conference is five forty five, um, and so when I get there, I usually yesterday I went into the cafeteria and I wrote or the, like the little food room. It's not like a full on cafeteria, but it's like a room with tables. It's it's effectively that. Um, mm-hmm. I wrote. And then I sat by the court for a little bit, taking like videos and stuff and just chatting with people. And then I, there is a media room. I don't have a a seat in it. It's for like, there's tier one and tier two media. So that's like the Boston Globe. That's, that's John Krause. That's people. That's the people that get to sit, not at the top floor. Yeah. So I sit on the ninth floor for games. There's people who sit on the, the, the loge level, but um, there's only a certain amount of those seats. So Um, how long do I stay after? So you, it depends. I only stay till like just before midnight because I have to catch the tea. But you can stay as late as you want. Bobby Chris, he was up. telling me a story once. <clears throat> Literally, Bobby Chris, he told me a story once. He was like, there was one night after an overtime game where I was literally here till 5 a.m. because I was just writing. So you can just stay there and just do whatever you want for the whole night. So that's pretty, well, you can't uh, do whatever you want. You can't go out well, there no, and shoot hoops. You be can't do fire that. if you could. <laughs> Well, they broke it down last night for the Bruins so that you couldn't do anything. Um, do you have predetermined questions? Or do you let the game decide? I usually let the game decide. Sometimes I have like angles that I was thinking about beforehand, but it's usually just I write down notes in my little notebook and then I uh, I ask questions based on that after the game. Uh, do you know which players are going to be available? They let us know when we get down to the media room. So usually we'll get down there and then Jeff twists uh, who's a PR guy who has been there forever. He'll say like, these people are in here. These people are in the locker room. I don't have locker room access, but the people who do can then flip flop based on what they want to get and who they want to ask questions to. So <clears throat> it'll be like last night it was okay. Jason uh, and Jason Tatum and Derek white are in here, the press conference run. And then I think it was Jalen Brown and drew holiday. Uh, are in the locker room talking, so they'll talk there. And then Joe always talks in the press conference room. He's always first, so you always get Joe. Any other cool tidbits, <laughs> excuse me, of what goes on during media member? There's food. It's $10, and you can just get a bunch of food, which is nice. Um, I sit up on the ninth floor. Uh, it's it's fun up there. There's can't, a bunch of people I know. Can't clap. <laughs> can't sh- no you can't root for the team uh you can like smile if there's a super cool play and uh, you do it if it's the heat of this like if somebody makes a cool play we'll be like oh shit that's a cool play um <clears throat> but you, you can't be like overly egregiously cheering or anything <clears throat> uh practices are cool this is my first year being at practices <clears throat> those are fun uh tidbit from practice jay king always walks in and says sup fuckers and like runs in the room uh, and that that's an entertaining part but yeah, I mean that that's pretty pretty much it. If, I, if there are any questions I didn't get to, send them in the email. But that's that's pretty much the rundown. Uh, and yeah, uh, thank you, Christian. We appreciate you being the first time email. Mm, yes. Please send us more. <laughs> sure. R- RJ Ratlist NBA streaming Ratlist did the NBA for their streaming options. 
excuse me, for their streaming options. We cut the cord on cable when we moved into our new house, and I thought we could run the NBA app through our TV like we do for MLB, but it was a cluster mating season trying to get that set up. The NBA refuses to believe that someone cannot have cable or satellite service. We finally hooked up a small computer to, dedicated to the flat screen, and now the NBA thinks our ginormous flat screen is just another desktop monitor. Come on, NBA. Yeah, the NBA streaming services are terrible. I've seen a bunch of stuff on Twitter the past couple of days, too, that, like, no one's buying League Pass, and that's because it's, like, obscenely expensive. And, like, I mean, I, I know I have it just because, like, this is my job, so I kind of have to have it. But if, if I'm just a college kid looking to watch some games and I see the price of League Pass, I'm just, like, I just don't want to spend that much money. Like, that, it's just they, they kind of make it unaccessible. Yeah. <clears throat> so they're cutting off their demographic a lot there. But, yeah, rat right, list. I agree. Get, get League Pass. <laughs> Yeah, maybe that's the option. RJ, Harden trade options benefits to Celtics. So the beard is being shopped around. Let's consider his current possibilities and how they help or hinder the Celtics. Clippers or Timberwolves, freeze up rotation time and shots for Maxi. That, along with Harden not being present on the court, makes Philly better. Value to the Celtics, annoying more so during the playoffs and gets uh, and picks uh, Philly gets. <clears throat> Heat, this immovable beard versus the irresistible hair gel. Who wins this contest of hairstyles and attitudes? Harden or Riley? I want to believe that Harden will spoil heat culture, but he might just have enough. Uh, he might have just enough spite into him, uh, in him to care and play well in Miami. Value to the Celtics. It will either blow up the heat this season or jumpstart them. There is no middle ground. <clears throat> yeah. No trade. Harden stays put and everyone in Philly is as comfortable as when Uncle Harry is getting sloshed at Thanksgiving dinner. Sixers remain a playoff team, but Embiid may reevaluate if he wants to stay in town long term. Benefits Celtics because we could always put Pouty Beard at a key mo or pull Pouty Beard at a key moment and we can beat uh, good but aging Harden. Be well, RJ. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, that about breaks it down. I, I don't think the Timberwolves or the Heat would trade for Harden. I, I just, it feels like based on the way the Clippers are negotiating, they're the only teams involved in those negotiations. So I don't really see him going anywhere, but the Clippers, maybe there's a question of if he ever even gets traded in the first place. Uh, but Harden, the whole Harden situation, as we've said all summer, is just a huge win for the Celtics because a, if he gets traded, the Sixers are probably worse regardless, just because you're not going to get fair value return for him at this point because the way he's handled it. And if he stays in Philly, then it's good for the Celtics because he's pouting and making a mess in Philly. So uh, it's kind of a win-win no matter which way you swing it, although the heat point is is scary. If he does buy into heat culture, that probably wouldn't be too fun for Boston, uh, even though they did just get the win over Miami the other night. So <clears throat> that's a good thing. Thank you, RJ. We appreciate you very much. Uh, last email of the program. RJ, don't panic. <clears throat> Evening, gents. This was four hours ago. This is 4 a.m. Uh, or I guess, I, I don't know if you're West Coast, East Coast, RJ, but 4 a.m. for us at least uh, this morning. So four hours ago. Evening, gents. Game usually have a storyline that stands out against the Knicks. In a lot of ways, it was the KP and Tatum show. Tonight had a theme, and it was much more subtle. But it was much more subtle <clears throat> in that no one player dominated the game, but everyone pitched in, stayed focused, and got the job done. I was listening to the game on streaming, and when the Celtics went down 13 in the first quarter, my mind flashed back to Grandy's most annoying stat from last year about how the Celtics had terrible results when they fell behind by double digits. But just like defenses preach and staying... Uh, Staying in contact with your man on defense, the Celtics didn't let Heat get separation. More importantly, when I watched the game later on, the Celtics never had the body language they exhibited against the Heat last year. That sense of "oh no, here we go again." Uh, they were the they were the ones who kept grinding, not con not content to just get ahead, but to do what it took to stay ahead. Uh, even at the end, when KP fouled out, the Celtics stayed cool and ran through the finish line. Shout out to Horford. Uh, a few notes. Did you notice how little we saw of the old JT dribble out high? Don't pass. Take a three tonight. It didn't sink in until a third quarter. Uh, now, how much he was getting inside along with moving the ball or taking a three in the flow of the offense. I like the Tatum we saw tonight. The Heat had several of their baskets that came from players knowing each other and knowing where and when to drop off an interior pass, stuff like that. The Celtics had some turnovers that were more a matter of mistiming from not having that familiarity. I'll take 15 turnovers when they force 12 on the Heat. Two games, two wins. Neither was wall to wall highlight real stuff, but they were wins. That's what champions do. Be well, RJ. Yeah, I agree. Tatum took a bunch of threes, but it felt like he wasn't forcing, and he was definitely getting inside, attacking Jaime Hawkes, which was good. Uh, KP fouled out, but Al Horford is a great backup option when KP fouls out, so that's a nice thing to have off the bench. Uh, I don't know how much Sam heard of the email because I know he was lagging. I can hear him struggling, but uh, it's if there was a time to struggle, it's while Jack's reading the email. So it sure I is. It's, it's it's literally the worst <laughs> thing ever. I want to I want to scream, but 
Like maybe the inter- everything. unplugging, plugging in, moving the thing. That's all right. Things dog shit. That's all right. We got through the emails. Thank you, RJ. Thank you, Philip. Thank you, Christian. Let us know if you have more questions. We're happy to oblige. But uh, moving on to the NBA portion of the program. In talking to Sam before we started the show, uh, we both watched a little bit of basketball outside of the Celtics. Obviously, the main Celt- uh, focus has been that. But are there any teams that stand out to you from a non-biased perspective as the most entertaining to watch so far that you've enjoyed watching? OKC has won both games. They have. And that is a, that is a team I have not got to watch yet. Okay, but I know they're a team to keep your eyes on because they're a big. Maybe they're going to take a leap team. So is Orlando, yeah. who's also two and up. Now Orlando has mm-hmm. beaten uh, the piss out of the Rockets, <laughs> and they also beat Portland. So they don't have the most impressive slate of wins. Thunder beat the Cavs though. <clears throat> That's a good win. OKC okay, did beat the Cavs. They beat the Cavs. Uh, other teams that I've thought are interesting. I thought that Philly Milwaukee game was really good. <laughs> it was. It was pretty interesting because. Philly didn't have Harden, and they still almost won that game. Mm-hmm. And Milwaukee kind of collapsed, and then Philly collapsed. It was like neither one of us wants to win this game. I will say, since we said non-biased, Dame is so good. <laughs> he's so fucking good. He it's so annoying. He's He's been so good for the Bucs. He's the perfect fit. He's exactly what they wanted to see, uh, which, again, from a Celtics perspective, is probably frustrating. But from a basketball fan perspective, like – respect right like he's just nasty uh other teams that have been fun slash caught my eye uh the king's warriors game last night was really good the warriors had a big lead of four minutes to go i watched the rest on my train ride home um kings fought back darren fox is still clutch he's still that dude chris duarte was checking uh steph curry full court doing a pretty good job so that was fun to see uh keegan murray took a crazy three to like try to cut the deficit with like a minute something left not even close it was like contest he's like that was I got it, guys. Valentine. <laughs> yeah yeah no it was it, it wasn't that bad but um it was not close uh the jazz got a cool win jordan clarkson hit a fucking ridiculous shot to to put them ahead and then russ missed a pass to lose the game so that was something i watched in the air ball. um yeah he did not play well russ the bulls the had man. the the Bulls are the weirdest box score I've ever seen. Everyone except for like a little, few players on their bench was like a minus plus minus. And then Alex Caruso was a plus 29 in a one point win. Like <clears throat> what the fuck? What the hell? <laughs> How are you plus 29 in a one point win? That's it's crazy. <clears throat> so Your shout out to Alex sucks. Caruso. Yeah. <clears throat> shout out Alex Caruso, I guess. Shit, man. Chicago is a f- dump- dumpster fire. Terrible. Yeah. They don't have any direction. Levine mm-hmm. sucks. He's been a minus. His net rating has to be already in the 50s by now. Minus 50. Ooh, I can tell you. Let's take a look. He was we're, horrible we're in the opener. He was official horrible guess. yesterday. Minus 22 but, through two games. Okay. Well, still not good. He was just bad <laughs> in the first game, but the plus minus didn't reflect it. But yesterday yeah. it was really, really not a good plus minus. Yeah. Levine hasn't been good. The Bulls. <clears throat> haven't been good spurs one and one picked up a win an ot against the rockets uh <clears throat> wemby had 21 points 12 rebounds three steals three blocks and he didn't make a three <laughs> he's, he's, this dude's nasty rockets are terrible their their idea was awful fred van fleet actually had a really good game uh he didn't make his threes but he did everything else he had 24 8 and 12 Alper and Shangun had 25, 14, 7, 2, and 1. So he was also good. He was unrightfully stolen from me in a fantasy draft. <laughs> yep. Uh, but the Spurs took, took him. Spurs you took know what the worst down, part man. of that was? The guy took like a minute and a half. He took the whole clock. Yeah. Oh. He was thinking, man. He was thinking. The, um, the people that take the clock are ratless. Not, not that we're there yet, but you take Henry. the whole time on the draft. <laughs> Anything else that stood out so far? I don't think so. Jalen Duran has been really good, um, but that'll bleed into our next thing. Anyways, uh, we're going to take a look and overreact or jokingly overreact to some NBA player stats, because obviously it's been one to two games, but we're going to see who's leading the, the league in points. <laughs> see who's leading the NBA in scoring. It is Luca. Uh, Cam Thomas averaging 33 points through two games is kind of nuts because it's not like he averaged like 15 and 17 it's both like 36 and 30 like he's just he's putting up a 30 pointer in, in both games um so shout out cam thomas an efficient 30 points to 62 percent from the field uh and 33.3 percent from three he's taking 20 shots a game and only four and a half of them are threes so he's taking a lot of middies um which, kelly Oubre. Uh, speak to you 
Yeah, he had a really, really good opener. He's been good. Um, How'd the Celtics not sign him? What the hell? <laughs> How'd Especially after him? what I've seen these first couple games, like haven't been overly impressed with Hauser. I guess Brissett kind of came in and made his presence felt yesterday, so I'm not too too worried about that backup spot. But yeah, I mean, Kelly Oubre just absolute yeah, but masterclass against Milwaukee. Now he he started right, so I, and he played. I don't a think big big chunk of minutes. I don't think he'd be doing that in Boston as much though, because a lot of his stuff in Mil- in Philly was I. It's Kelly Oubre time. Let me do something. He's not gonna have Kelly Oubre time in Boston, right? Like they need that. <laughs> yeah, with Harden out, but uh, probably not gonna happen too much. Uh. Assist numbers, it is Tyrese Halliburton. He put up 11 in his one game. Chris Paul, averaging 10.5, is kind of impressive uh, for that Warriors team. He's fitting like a glove, though. I mean, all the questions of will he fit, he's played really well for that Warriors team, uh, and they are 1-1 one and one on the season. Uh, Lamella Ball is averaging 9.5. Jokic is... <sighs> this guy's not fair, man. <laughs> this dude's not. He's... I was listening to the low Five post. Five and a half turnovers <clears throat> per game. Mm, Doesn't little matter. Little careless. I was listening to the low post uh, and he was just like him and Nikaias Duncan were talking and they're just like, yeah, you just can't really, uh, can't really do anything to stop this dude. You just kind of got to score more points than he does. Because if you say there was one possession, apparently in the Lakers game where Gabe Vincent was on him and then he switched off to like, get back to his man and switch. And the way they described it was like, Jokic was like, are you going to do it? You gonna do it? You gonna do it? Oh, you did it! And he just took a three and like drained it in his face. <laughs> like, there's no guarding Jokic. He's uh, he's nasty, point blank. Um, what else? Ben Who's Simmons. Tapping... Ben Simmons is actually playing pretty well. Yeah, he's doing everything but scoring. He has become Draymond, and even his scoring. That... What he had? What ten points yesterday in in their loss to Dallas? Yeah, he's averaging seven points on seven shots a game. It's not great, but it's not terrible. Like he's shooting fifty percent for the field. Well, when ten all rebounds, are like layups. <clears throat> yeah, ten rebounds, eight and a half assists, one steal, one and a half blocks, only two turnovers. It's actually pretty good <clears throat> in twenty-seven point seven minutes tonight. Sam, who is leading the league in total turnovers so far? And it is okay. There's three players with eleven, so I, I didn't think there were like this many. Jokic, <clears throat> Jokic just one. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not gonna cheat. Jokic, okay. uh, mm-hmm. Zach Levine, no, no. Julius Randle, <laughs> no, no, no. One is both Eastern Conference. One is a point guard. One is a forward. Trey Young. Yep. The other one's a weird one. Uh, <clears throat> I'm trying to think. It's not Jalen. <laughs> Atlantic Division. No. Atlantic Division. Huh. Yeah. Is it Young Scotty guy. Barnes? It is Scotty Barnes. Eleven turnovers. Yeah. <clears throat> not ideal for Scotty. Careless. <clears throat> also, fifteen assists though. So he's 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 dishing them out still. Um, uh, blocks leader Jaron Jackson has eight through two games. Chet had Chet had seven blocks last night in one game, I think. <laughs> it's crazy. A lot of um, Celtics up there, <clears throat> yeah. Porzingis, Derek White, Drew Holiday, all in the top 10. Um, KCP has eight steals this season, uh, 31 rebounds in two games for Jalen Duran is fucking crazy. <laughs> <laughs> That's nuts. Um, so See their new Andre 30. Drummond. Maybe, but probably better. Uh, 12 of those are offensive, too. And then Luca has scored 82 points in two games. <laughs> he made a crazy yeah. shot to put them up or send it to overtime yesterday. Whatever he yeah. did, it was like a hook shot from the wing. It was just a clutch Great. time shot. Yeah, He's nuts. Piss me off if that happened to me, I'll tell you that. <laughs> yes, it would. Poor Nets fans. Uh, and I can say poor Nets fans now because I kind of like the Nets. I have nothing against them. They're cool. Not fine with the Nets. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't like that they're in the Celtics group for this in-season tournament. But besides Yeah, that, but I, I have no – my point is I have no ulterior motive to not root for the Nets anymore. <laughs> I, have, I have no reason to root against them. Um, sure. Kyrie's anyways, gone. exactly. Some other news. Anthony Simons uh, is out for four to six weeks. Shams reported yesterday. Um and he will undergo surgery for UCL tear in his right thumb and is expected to miss four to six weeks. Weeks tough for the Blazers. Uh, he was on my fantasy team, so tough for me. It just kind of sucks to see like a young guard go down this early in the season where he was supposed to be like a focal point of the offense. Not fun. Yeah, he was going to get a really big chance. Not to say that he hasn't proven himself enough to get paid because he has, but this would have yeah. been a huge moment already got for paid. him. That's what I mean. He's already been paid. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> yep. Would have been a really sucks. cool moment for him to take over the team. Agree. So uh, tough for him. Uh, other news: 
Rick Carlisle got an extension from the Pacers. There were no details. You don't get details with coaches' extensions, but good for him. I saw a lot of memes saying, like, oh, they only extended him because the Wizards he, he killed the Wizards. <laughs> um, but no, Rick Carlisle is a good coach. He, he's going to help lead that Pacers team to the playoffs very soon. Uh, Pacers are good, man. I know they're the team you're very high on as well. So we'll see what happens there. But good for Rick Carlisle. That was it. Good for him, man. Former Celtic. Mm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, all right. Let's get into the Rattlers and wrap up here so we can both uh, get on out. Uh, I'll let you kick it off. Can't wait to run. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Internet. So I guess I'll go in chronological <laughs> order. So sure. yesterday I uh, am driving from the gym to my house. And there is this intersection in my city. Mm. Always busy. Always busy, always busy. Anyways, I'm driving past. I get past the intersection, so I'm home free. And then there is this person preparing to drive out of the Dave's parking lot. Now, Dave's is not an establishment that I'm a fan of. I've played many a time that they have traffic cops that come out there and stop people and let mm. their customers out of the parking lot. They also got a new location to put a light Do in. they actually do that? Yes, that's a real thing. And they do it at this intersection, so they hold up traffic even worse. But that's, that's not what this right. is about. But they will never get a cent out of me. I will not shop there. I boycott Okay. Them. Swear to God, I boycott Is them. it a, a, a grocery store? Yeah. Okay. But anyways, I am driving. There's no one behind me. And this guy is just about to blindly just drive out and take a charge. Not looking. Didn't look. And then he's already like out. I've stopped. And then he's like, oh, like you can go. It's like, no, buddy, you're already in my way. Just finish, finish the move. You're making mm -hmm. it worse. It was horrible. Yeah. So double does, rat shopping at Dave's he, and just driving like an asshole. Does he not have a stop sign? Did you just blow through it? No, he was stopped. And then he looked the other way and thought he was clear. And then he like went out panicked. and was like, oh, sorry. And he's just sitting there. Those are the worst. And the, the you know the equivalent of it is that I run into every time. I, I went over this on the show once. There's this Duncan where people are coming out of the exit, but it's like an entrance slash exit, and they just like come out in the middle, and then they go, oh, "You can go." I'm like, I'm turning in to there. You did not give me enough room to turn. Finish what you're doing and let me go in. Like fuck off. Like get out of my way. Like like you already are the idiot in this situation. Finish being an idiot so I can get on with my day. Yeah. So this yeah. Si later in the day, I'm now driving the opposite way and I am heading towards the light. I am coming in the direction that I was driving. So I'm coming from my house. So I'm I'm at the same section of, of I'm on the same street of this intersection. I'm trying to make it yeah. make sense. The same exit <laughs> to this place. <laughs> mm -hmm. OK, so I'm going to paint the picture as best I can. I know I'm struggling. To go left, there is a left turn lane here at this light. Uh -huh. This is a lane where you sometimes have to wait twice because it is so long. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. So I am probably on the border of maybe having yeah. to wait twice. Yep. The person in front of me elects during a green light. To let somebody out of the parking lot. Yeah. Terrible. Tank. Did you miss Fight the light? A tank. Mon Did you miss monster the light? truck. Monster <laughs> truck. You just drive over the top of them. Did you miss the light? I missed the light. So the person in front of me. <laughs> I swear to God, people are driving this time of year to hit red lights. I don't know what's been in the water it, here. No, it's been bad this year. Yeah, I agree. It's I'm like, running you the same thing. This is a stale light, buddy. Step on it. We're gonna get stuck. <laughs> it's bad it's I'm it's crying. so bad i'm so emotional i i so literally have on the sheet <laughs> under my relics people who drive slow i don't know why i'm running into people who just drive under the speed limit lately but what are we doing like like uh, why why are we going 35 and a 40 you should be going 50 and a 40 like yeah can we can we go can we go a little faster oh my god it's so fucking annoying i'm not into and, politics uh, but i may run just to revamp traffic laws it's speed terrible. range not a speed limit Hmm. Uh, I'm going to rat list myself in the situation hmm. that I 
cause kind of so one of my headlights has been out for a long time i need to get it fixed i haven't had time right like i just haven't had time to go take my car to the shop last night other headlight goes out so i'm driving oh. home at 1 30 <laughs> in the fucking dark oh my god can't see shit uh i'm like putting my blinker on because those lights are working just so i can see however the most annoying part of it was and i'm not i don't want to rat list the people because they're just trying to be nice i'm getting the oh your your lights aren't on buddy let me let me flash my he- yeah. high beams at yeah. you every fucking time yeah. I'm just, and i can't see as it is so i'm just getting flashbacks yeah <laughs> every two seconds i'm like one guy pulled in front of me on the highway and like flashes brake lights i'm like buddy i know i i know my brakes are out fuck up i yeah. can't turn them on like I, yeah. I don't know, there's nothing i can do stop fucking flash me let me get home well, so it's good that you have time to go anymore. to this the shop today yeah, right. And tomorrow, I definitely have a ton of time, ton yeah. of places, ton of fucking stuff to do. No, but like, thank you to the people, I suppose. But like, <laughs> you're just making it worse. You're just making my night worse by flash banging me. Uh, but driving at home in the dark with no headlights, not a fun time. Very scary. I can't imagine. That would be terrible. <laughs> Very scary. My car had like this thing where I think the battery was weak, so my lights were not as bright. And I was like, are my lights even on? And like, I yeah, that's what it was it. for a while. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, oh, all right, well, this is tough. I can't imagine not having any lights. I had a tiny, tiny bit because like the, the orange lights were working. It's just like the, the yeah. main ones were out. So like I was fine. Like I literally was driving down the street with my blinker up. Just like I could get like vision done. Vision done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but we made it home. Just the, the should have put your uh, phone flashlight up on the dash. I know. I was just every two seconds. I was just getting like. Yeah, it's Fuck terrible. It my face. I'm like, I know. I'm People like, are, I yeah, they're trying to help, but you, should, you need like a, you know, like the restaurant, like in the windows, they have the open light. You should have one that says like, I know. Yeah, the fucking the third time it happened, I should have gone. You know what? Fucking put a swerve, crash into them. Yeah. I know they're fucking. On you. <laughs> oh man, you peel out know. in front of them. All right, so do you have any more? Yes, you do. I have a couple. So if you want to okay. close, I can I can go rapid fire, but it's up to you. Yeah, close because okay. mine are like tied together because it's like That's one fine. big so, story. Uh I just read one of yours. Please don't say that on the podcast. I already I already did that <laughs> okay. one. Okay. Um right. quick one. This is just happening before we started recording. Add pop ups that move the page when you're clicking, so you click something else. Just the worst. The worst. Die, Die in a fire. Just Celtics fucking blog. terrible. Celtics blog does that. <laughs> Does it? I have, I have yeah. ad blocker sometimes, but I don't on certain browsers. Uh, and then the other one, uh, shit, I had it and I lost it. I had it and I lost it. I had it and I lost it. Oh, that's pissing me off. Oh, what a day. <laughs> Gotta I'm write so them. Tired. You have no, I sheet. Your cursor is right there. It. Oh, oh. People on dating apps who respond mm. with one word. Mm. Why are you on the app? <laughs> what yeah. Do you, I'll be like, how are you doing? Good. I'm you like, how's know. your day? good <laughs> what well, i think they, this happens i agree why why are you on the app and matching with people if you're going to respond with the driest fucking text messages i've ever read in my life what is wrong with you i'm putting in the effort and you're giving me fucking nothing oh uh, it, it just pisses me off you don't understand the luxury of being a lady on the dating apps because i mean <laughs> listen i don't either but yeah well, like you, you you're <laughs> just getting all the attention <laughs> ratios in your favor <laughs> just it's like just, four guys to every girl on the app so you're just it's like they never set. but it's like but then don't match like you can just not be interested in somebody not match but if you match with somebody and then you go good it's like you're in fucking third grade like mm. grow up <laughs> how was school today busy. good yeah yeah That's right it. That's all you got all right i'm done <laughs> all right so yesterday i went to newport i went to newport with my girlfriend uh it was kind of impromptu we just kind of made the drive and got food so we we walk around we find a place to get our food we're sitting eating that place we call the restaurant sam fucking idiot (laughs) and we're sitting there and this is a place where you can clearly see out like it's open air there's it was a nice day yesterday but like there's no windows and you're literally just like looking out into a little like alleyway because in Newport, everything's kind of close together. And we're sitting there and who do I fucking see 
is Michael Myers just walking around. <laughs> Some guys just dressed as Michael Myers oh in downtown Newport. Just it's not Halloween. It, it's the Friday before. You still got four days of all the like dress up as like Spider Man or something. Like maybe so many like, costumes. That yeah, maybe something that like if someone sees you, they're like uh, maybe I'll get murdered today. Like don't do that. And he was just, like just walking around when you know you know like when you're like in a city, Jack and. There's restaurants, they have the menu outside so you can look at it. Yeah. You just got Michael Myers walking up, like staring at the menu, seeing if he's hungry or not. <laughs> I was like, what is going on here? How is this okay? I don't think that should be legal. I don't think you should be able to be like masked if it's not mm. Halloween. It's kind of <laughs> dangerous. Like, <clears throat> yeah, there were so many costumes at the tea stop last night. I was so confused because I forgot what time of year it was. I was like, yeah, what is happening? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe he was planning for a night out and they do like Halloween. No, it's themes. still lame. It's still lame. I agree. It's not even lame. It's just creepy. <clears throat> yeah, just it's pick weird. Pick a different costume. I don't care if you dress up. Just don't dress up as, hey, I might murder you guy. Are you in or out on Halloween? I like Halloween. I'm, I'm not like a big up. costume guy, but I still enjoy the like the time. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. The, sure. the media enough. that is around Halloween is far better than anything Christmas. Hmm. Halloween scary movies are way better than Christmas movies. Ooh. It's a fact. Lame. You tell me it's not hilarious. Have you ever seen? You know what I watched for the first time was Scream last week. I've never Scream seen is either. hysterical. I mean, I've seen scary movie before, so like that's what it's based off of. So like that's yeah. all I can think of. But that movie's hysterical in its own right. The killer's like really shitty at killing people. He's like fumbling around like he's Julius Randall chasing people. It's great. <laughs> And then uh, second part of the rat list from Newport. I'm walking back to my car with my girlfriend and these two old people are in front of us. They are walking very, very slow. And then we get to my car Mm. and I go to one side. Kaylin goes to one side and we have passed these people because they have walked. They were walking slow. And then the people go one side, one side. They split and go around my car as if they're about to get in. It was the most bizarre experience. We walked for like 15 minutes after that. And I was still thinking about it. I was like, I don't know what the hell these people were doing. It was so weird. (laughs) Did they, were they like not together and they were getting in separate cars? Like what the fuck? No, no, no. They were a couple and they were continuing walking. They were not getting in any car. What? I was like, what is happening here? They're just like, it was so bizarre. I don't think they knew it was my car, but. It, it was really, really weird. I, I'm not doing a good job of explaining it, but no, I know bizarre, exactly. Bizarre, bizarre experience. <clears throat> Did they just go past your car and like go somewhere else? Like that's such yeah. a weird. What? But it was like that, they were like odd. circling us like sharks. It's like, all right, no, get yeah, away from us. That is definitely weird. Wow. Okay. That's what I got. Yeah. Michael Myers guy was something else. I <laughs> Michael was Myers just sitting there. I think she took a picture of him. But <laughs> all right. Well, thank you all for tuning in. I know we both got stuff to do. I might, I don't know if I'm going to have time to edit this now or I'll have to do it later, but we'll see what happens. Uh, I'll probably actually have to edit it later, which is tough for me, but sorry. thank y'all for tuning in (laughs) now. Thank y'all for tuning in. We appreciate it. Uh, Make sure to subscribe to how about them Celtics. Check us out on all uh, streaming platforms, Spotify, Apple, leave us a review and five stars. We'll be live for the Wizards game on playback to watch live with you guys, as well as a pregame before. Obviously, pregame is 30 minutes for every game. Uh, but yeah, I'll let Sam wrap it up. Yes, we're here. We were here. We're done. Thank you very much for listening and watching. If you're watching, you're on the YouTube, whether it's ours or CLNS's or CLNS's other. Make sure you subscribe if you're on ours. Make sure you hit the notification bell so you don't miss any live streams, daily uploads, breaking uploads, whatever it may be. We're here for it. We're putting in the work. So come hang out and watch and get your Celtics fix. You can find us on Spotify and Apple as well. Follow us there. Leave a five-star review. Say something nice about the fellas. Playback.tv. It's just the name of the podcast with the apostrophe before the bout. You can watch the games with us Monday. Like Jack said, we'll be there for the Wizards game. Come hang out. It'll be a good time. I believe we're going to have at least one of the first of the floor guys. Ben will be joining us. Uh, proud member of the chat for the pregame streams, Ben. Yes, sir. But we're excited to chat with him <laughs> and enjoy the Jordan Pool show on Monday. Uh, you can also find us on social media. How about MCs? That's Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. Facebook is just the name of the podcast. 
You can find Jack on Twitter at JacksmoNBA. You can follow me at Sam LaFrance NBA. That's it for us. Bye. Check, Jacko. Come on.